Hello, everybody. Welcome to the call. This is Scott Hutzbeth, and I'm here with another live class of Agent Mastermind. We have SMP Mastermind members on the call. We have Real Estate Animal members on the call. We'll be calling you here shortly in the next couple of days. That was a loud noise. And uh, I got my dear friend and partner on the call with me, Paul Baxter. How are you, How doing, you brother? I'm doing great, Scotty. How about yourself, man? Excellent, excellent. So we're going to cover something that uh, is sincerely a passion of mine that I that I have literally uh, made my priority to make it help other people literally free up at least minimum an hour a day out of their inbox and possibly more. I've seen some people literally clear two, three hours out of their day because they say the average person sorts their spends 45 minutes sorting their email every single day which is um, just a waste of time. So I'm going to show you how to not make your inbox as the task box, and a lot of people call it a task box, and how to literally have it at zero two or three or four times out of the day and spend very little time in your inbox taking care of or actually having someone else take care of your inbox for that matter. So uh, you ready to get started, man? I, I absolutely, and just a real quick check, is everybody is everybody's audio okay so far? Got good audio. Audio is fading. Yes. Okay. Cool. So, so if you're having an issue, just a, just a real house cleaning, a little bit of house cleaning. If you're having an issue with audio, what we recommend is you call in. There's a number on the side. It gives you the dial number and the access code. I would I would recommend calling calling in because that removes the internet that you're trying to beat, and then the go to meeting try. So um, that's just my recommendation. If you ha if you hear it cutting out, it's just it's it's internet between go to meeting and your internet. And then if you have any questions. There's a question box over on the right-hand side. Also, as we go along, ask your questions. We will get to all the questions at the end. There's going to be a lot of stuff I cover, but I kind of streamlined this, Paul. I made it so we're just going to cover a couple things, and then we'll continue this discussion on GMO with Google Docs later on down the road. So you guys ready? Perfect. Let's roll in. All right. Ten reasons to use Gmail. Now, this is, just, this is ten. Now, I'm going to give you probably a hundred by the time we're all done with this training on Gmail, but less spam. You can, I literally have very little, if any, spam come into my inbox. I'm going to show you the proper way to not accept or get rid of spam. I want to show you the proper way to do it. Search search alone is going to help you help save you an hour a day. Easy. I talked to an agent a couple weeks ago. She said I spent an hour looking for an email, never found it. I, I asked her what the name was, pulled it right up within literally less than a second. Conversation view, built-in chat, on the go, lots of space. They give you seven gig of space. You can make phone calls. Priority inbox, we're not going to talk a whole lot about that. It's secure and it's free. That's the best part. So why Gmail? And I'm just going to throw up a bunch of stuff here. Automatically puts, no, this is, you know, I put number one is number one for a reason. And I don't know if you know this or not, but e Gmail automatically puts people into your inbox automatically, excuse me, it puts people into your contacts automatically. So when you send an email, that email is thrown into your contacts. So 100% of the time, you have an up-to-date contact list with everybody you've ever emailed, okay? That thing should be growing every single month. But the problem is people aren't doing that, so it's like, okay, where's my contact list? Well, it's in an Excel spreadsheet that I, you know, or it's on a piece of paper, or it's in a notebook, or well, this this removes even thinking about where your contacts are going because you can it, 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 it's automatically updated 24/7, which now we can import into LinkedIn, we can use on Facebook. There's so many different things we can throw our contact list around, and then like Paul said at the beginning of the class, database is where it's at. If you have 100 people in your database and you close however many loans last month or however many transactions, if you double your database and you have 200 people, you're probably going to double the amount of transactions you have, right? I mean, that's kind of common knowledge. So take it to three, four, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred thousand. I mean, it just gets really, really fun. So calendars in the cloud, task list is in the cloud, filters, delegate 99% of your inbox. You can literally have emails automatically forwarding just one email or all your emails going to a certain uh, somebody, virtual assistant, or assistant or partner. Uh, it's free. Documents in the clouds. We're not going to cover that today, but it, it's amazing the technology. Uh, actually, I am going to cover documents a little bit, Paul. I'm going to show you how to add a snooze button for free to your inbox, and I'm going to give you exact details on how to do that. And here we go. Tons of, uh, and I'm the one that didn't turn off my cell phone. Uh, how about that? And uh, tons of storage. You can archive old emails. You never, ever, ever want to delete an email because you never know when you're going to need it again, all right? Use Gmail for marketing. I'm going to give you a couple ideas, maybe not today, but you can have, I have literally 15 different Gmail accounts, and I own homebuyerbook at gmail.com. If you send it to me, if you send me an email there, it'll come to my inbox 
at scottybud23 at gmail.com. Okay, so uh, uh, we'll we'll cover that in, in later training. Awesome search functions, multiple emails, canned responses, and so much more. So we could literally spend the next four weeks on this and get you guys really, really organized and up to date and in the clouds with so many different things. We're just going to cover cover what I think is the most important first, and then we'll take it to the next level next time. All right. So safety first. Just so you know, if you forget to log out and you go into log in somewhere else, or like say you're at a, a local computer or whatever, you're somebody else's computer. You can log in and see that it, if somebody else has signed on and then automatically turn off everything of everywhere and log out of everywhere. So that's the cool part about it. They do make that easy. So you don't have to worry about, did, did I log out of my friend's house or, or parent's house or if you're wherever you're at? So don't have to worry about that. So really quickly, if you don't have Gmail to sign up or sign in, this is where you go. You go to Google.com, click on the Gmail. And excuse me for the basics. I just want to get this out of the way. If you're not currently using Gmail, you're, you're going to want to use it just because of so many different tools. And if you're not using the Gmail part, you use the Documents part. You might use the Google Voice part. You might use, I mean, there's so many different things you'll be using, OK? So click on Gmail. You're going to log in or sign up. So uh, in the right-hand side, it says Create an Account. Right here, it says Log In, either one. And then when you go to Create an Account, this is what you're going to see. Now, Paul, is there any lag time at all whatsoever? Any lag time there, buddy? Not, not that I am seeing. Okay, cool. I, I don't have so, a lag right now. Okay, cool. So on the on this uh, right here, where it says first name, choose your username. This is where you're gonna actually gonna choose your Gmail. Now, what I typically do is maybe choose my business name, maybe choose so you know it doesn't really matter because you can send and receive in Gmail from any email that you have, no matter where it is. So don't worry about that. But get something that you might use. To, if you have to use it, it goes out there. Then it it looks presentable. All right. Uh, create a password, birthday, gender, mobile phone. This is just a verified text, like if you want to verify your account. Other email address. Put in another email address so if you ever have to verify your account, if you lost your password, they'll ask you what that email address is. And then, of course, fill out these. And then you're done. And the next thing you're going to see is this welcome, congratulations. You might see a, a couple other choices, like, hey, set up your Google+. Plus. Just skip it. Go right to your inbox. And uh, let's just get started with this. So. The excitement of today is is well, I'm going to show you how to only have three labels in your inbox and literally how to have a zero inbox a couple times a day and have it just feels so good I can't even tell you. So I'm going to show you how to have a reply. I'm going to show you how to set up a snooze, not the most important, but you will use it if you set it up. Voicemail, we're not going to cover that today but um, it, unless we have time, but voicemail is using Google Voice for when people call my cell phone it actually gets transferred to Google Voice. I don't pay any extra for extra voicemails. I never delete a voicemail. And it sits there, and it's converted from voice to text. And it sets inside my inbox. So I can literally listen to my emails, or excuse me, my voicemails in my inbox, all right? And then the other one I'm going to do is waiting. I'm going to show you how to set up a waiting label. And then all mails, which is Gmail setup. This is where all your emails are going to go, which I call the archive, all right? So. This is what it's going to look like. Now, you'll see my inbox is zero. Now, I actually have a couple emails in there right now, so we're going to go live and show you. But I'm going to, when we're done, this is the mindset behind this, and I'm going to go over what reply means and what waiting means, more importantly. And then snooze is no more than if you got an email and you um, don't need to attend to it right now and you just want to get it out of your inbox, but you want it back in your inbox within one to seven days. We actually found one that can put it back within 31 days. So if you wanted to put it out there 22 days, you could have it come back in 22 days. But it's kind of a nice feature. We used to, remember, Paul, you remember Boomerang, Boomerang Gmail? I do. Boomerang Gmail used to be free, but now it's like five bucks a month. So this pretty much does the same thing. It sends it out there and then lets it come back. So we'll, uh, I have explicit instructions on how to set that up in your, in your Gmail, and it's free to do. So you don't have to pay any money to do it, all right? Pretty cool, huh? Very cool. All right, next. And the reason I called it Gbox Zero because I didn't want you to be able to search and find anything that I'm doing here, and I and I so I searched. I like to do that because if you you know if you find stuff, you might veer off and do different things. So Gbox Zero is a term that I came up with. I don't know that it exists, but what it stands for is your Gmail box at zero. Okay, pretty cool, right? So when you get an email from me and you say is your Gbox at zero, you're going to know what I'm talking about, right? Because we're gonna—I mean, we're gonna hold you accountable. I really, truly want to get it to where you're not sitting there in your inbox 24/7, clicking the refresh, 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 refresh. Like I see so many people do. They're caught up, and it's such a loss of production, waiting for that next email that's probably not gonna make you any money, 
or someone else can be handling for you, or you can be forwarding or whatever, okay? So check this out. No inbox, no, no Gmails whatsoever. So first off, to set up the labels, what you're going to do is uh, go to this little gear on the right-hand side of your computer in, when you're logged into Gmail. You're going to click on Settings, and I have this, you're going to get this PowerPoint when we're done. And then you're going to click on Labels over on the left-hand side, okay? Pretty simple, right? And then you're going to click, scroll down to where it says Labels. You're going to create a new label. So create new label. And you're going to uh, type in reply. Now, you can, you can do this however you want, however you feel comfortable. And I'll explain what the reply means, what the waiting means, and how you can just have literally two labels to control your whole inbox and have it cleared out every single day. So same for a waiting label. You're going to create a waiting label. You're going to click on create. Now you're going to have those two labels sitting inside there, all right? So now we're going to have reply and waiting. Okay, make sense? So to get these labels to show up, you're going to right-click on this little arrow. And I kind of hid the arrow when I took this picture. And you're going to click on the arrow, and it's going to allow you to change the color of these labels. Now, the reason I like the colors is because I know when they come in, if they come back to me or they're labeled that way, I know that they're labeled black or red or green. So maybe urgent emails are red or maybe something's on fire, it's red. So from, so from a particular person, you can put people into different labels. But they still can... And the cool part about this is they can be in many different labels. So you have a buyer label, and then you have under your buyer's label, you have all your clients, actually, of, of their email addresses, okay? Make sense, Paul? So what you're going to do is click on this arrow, and then you're going to click on Show, because you want these two things to show. And I'm going to show you why you want those two things to show, all right? So this is what it's going to look like when it's all done. Reply, snooze, voicemail, and waiting. These are the only labels I use all day long. And then, of course, all mail is your archive. So reply label. The reason I, I use the reply label, someone is requesting you to do something with or without a deadline. Examples including submitting reports, verifying something, and tracking on any task, right? Like maybe you're waiting for an appraisal or you're waiting for this or waiting for that. So it's going to be in your reply. You know that you don't have to reply to it yet because you don't have an answer to it yet, but you put in the reply label. It's that someone is asking you to respond to something but it requires more deep thoughts from you to respond. So you put it in your reply label because you know you, you may go, hey, I'll get right back to you. You respond, but then you throw a reply label. I'm going to show you how crazy simple it is to put that reply label on there. And then examples include people asking for opinion or asking about your availability for an event, showing, weekly report, whatever it is, that type of thing. After you reply to emails in this folder, you then can remove them. You can actually move them from the reply label just by clicking the X. And I took a little picture. This is one that I opened. And you'll notice I have a reply label and I have a voicemail label. See those? those they're color-coded. If you click the X, it removes it out of your reply label or your reply folder. Make sense? Really super simple. I'm going to show you a live demo on that. So I want to go through this first. Is that cool, hey, I definitely want to see the live demo. It makes absolute perfect sense. It it definitely does, and I can see how that can can streamline and save you. You know, instead of having a whole bunch of marks and, and a whole bunch of opened mail in your inbox and a whole bunch of things yeah. just sitting there for you to forget, you've got it in a nice secure place so that you know that those are the everything in that area or in that particular well, folder yeah. is something that you've got to get back to when you're just waiting on the answer to it or or you're waiting to find out what logistically you're going to be able to do to take on a specific task. I, I love the idea. I want to see it work in live so cool. I can kind of get the idea behind it too. Sure, sweet. Okay, so we'll do reply. So the waiting label, here's what the waiting – so this is the – okay, the first label is if you you got to reply to something but you can't reply to it now or you don't have an answer to it or you got to do a little homework to get them the answer, right? So the waiting label is typical emails that come in waiting folder are tracking codes, UPS, FedEx packages coming your way. I'm trying to give you some ideas. Uh, examples include shipping, tracking numbers from online shipping. Uh, you delegated a task and are waiting for a response. Result. Examples include emails from virtual assistant, employees, and anyone you are waiting to hear from. So, for example, you send an email out. How many times do you send an email out? You keep it in your inbox because you know you've got to keep it in front of you or you're going to forget about it. I mean, that's me 100%. So what I do is I put it in my waiting folder. I, and, and I'm always, you know, hey, is this done? Is that done? Did, did the appraisal come in? Did the um, home inspection come in okay? Did the pest inspection come in okay? Did, did we get the signed addendum, you know, from, you know, your email and your assistant? So you put it in the waiting going, okay, as soon as I get it, I'm going to clear, I'm going to go in my waiting and go clear, 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 else it's all done. All right, so it makes it really streamlined and organizing your inbox. 
confirmation from someone. It, uh, examples include asking another person if she or she received something from you, like an email, attachment, sales agreement, home inspection, kind of like we talked about, so confirmation. And then, um, so after you do the reply on the waiting label, here's the biggest rule of all, and this is big, and the reason you want to do this, the two-minute rule, if it can be done in less than two minutes, do it now. For example, if you get an email and you can respond to it, and I'm going to give you certain times that I think that I actually use to respond to an email, clean my inbox out, and it's done. If it can be done in two minutes, then it needs to be done. Just take care of it, all right? The reason is I don't want you to procrastinate. Like every, everybody will sit there all day long if they have nothing to do. They'll go in their inbox, and as emails come in, they take care of them. So they refresh, email, refresh, email. Paul, you catch yourself doing that every once in a while? I mean, that's kind of our job. Well, I, I, I've, I pretty much but, live in my email, but with exactly, the... It, right. With a lot of I, I've set my Gmail up now like this because my Gmail is is different than what my my support email is. So I live in my support email just because you, I'm going to get questions all day long. But Correct. for my Gmail, Correct. I've different. got it set up the way that you showed me this the other day, and I, I'll tell you, it has absolutely. I don't look at it. Isn't that amazing. From Thursday and yesterday and today, it, today I've only looked at my inbox one time so far, and I won't look at it again until four o'clock. Right. So it, right. it's I mean, really made thing. it so I've only got to check it a couple of times, and I can knock right. out in about 30 minutes everything that's in there. So it's it's absolutely helping me quite a bit. Yeah, so and the more emails you get, probably the less time you want to make that. You might make it the one-minute rule. And I find myself going, you know, I can handle this now, but sometimes you don't, I don't know, for some reason you just don't feel like it. Cause, but if you can do it in two minutes, just do it and clean out your inbox and then archive it. Cause Gmail has a, a, a thing where you send or receive or respond to an email. You can archive that email. And archive is no more than putting it in the all email inbox. The all email inbox the, and the archive are one and the same. You don't lose it. You don't delete it. You just put it in the archive so you can continually research and search for those emails again. All right. So the value in this rule is that you go through your inbox really fast. And initial, initially process only what is necessary. And this is a big part. If someone needs a quick response, you've taken care of that. If an email needs more attention, you can work on that later and prioritize which emails get the most attention after your inbox is processed and at Gbox zero, which is at zero, right? So your, your, your idea is to clear them all out. Get rid of spam so you're not even seeing that stuff. A lot of agents that I work with are getting emails that they don't ever need to see, but it's just there taking up space and they got to click the button and archive it or click the button and put it in the label, I'm going to show you how to filter that so you don't have to ever see them again. It automatically puts them in the label and it's there if you ever need to go look at it and pull something up. Okay, so here's email management workflow. So check email, which is we all do, process the inbox, and then it goes straight down to does it take longer than two minutes to process this email? No, reply right away, put email in archive folder, back to processing the inbox. You guys got that? Does it take longer than two minutes? Yes. Reply folder, process inbox. You're back. So you're done. You put it in the right reply folder. I'm going to show you how quickly it is to do this. And then you process the inbox. So you just do one or the other. It's real super simple, all right? And this will, if you, if you eat, live, and breathe this stuff, you will literally save hours of your day. It's amazing. So here's the huge time saver, and this is the one I hear a lot is, I looked for an email, I looked and looked and looked and looked, and I never could find it. So... I made my own little picture, Gmail with a magnifying glass. Just so you know, Gmail has the same algorithm as Google does. So this little box up here that sets up here above your inbox is the same algorithm, the same search power that if you go to Google and search something. So you're crazy not to use this. I use this 10,000 times a day when I'm looking for something. If that's what I need to do is find somebody or something, find an attachment, and I'm going to give you a couple examples. So from whoever or whatever. If you find an email that you know had a certain word in it, if it say it had 139.9, because you know they were asking about the home that was 139.9, you can't remember who the buyer was that requested it, if you put in there 139.9, it will pull up every email in your inbox that has 139.9 in it. It's that simple. Say so you find something that had an address in it. You know they requested information about an address. You're like, crap, I can't find it. I've gotten 20 emails since that came in. Well, you go, you put in the address, you search, it comes up automatically. It's that powerful. It'll save you that much time. Name of a person always comes up. Anything you can think of, you can put in the search criteria. So let's just look at the search capability. So here's the search. You can search from, to, who you sent an email to, 
the subject, has the words, there's where like has the words and address, a phone number, um, doesn't have, has an attachment, so sometimes you want to put in doesn't have because maybe home is in every single email you send out or maybe, you know, whatever it is. So, and has an attachment. So, say I wanted something from uh, Vicki Rice, I know, it was, I know it was an attachment she sent to me, and then has an attachment, and then I just click search, and it's going to pull up every email from Vicki Rice that has an attachment, all right? Really, really powerful there. Or I could just, you know, leave that box open and search every email from Vicki Rice because I know it was within the last couple of days that she sent it to me. Here's the filter setting. So if I click on an email and I want to filter that email, and I'm going to show you how easy this is to do this, I can, and here's where you get stuff out of your inbox. Now, reverting to spam, if you open up a spam email or if you see a spam email, I would recommend not opening it and clicking on the little box that's next to the email, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, and then either just clicking the spam button, which I'd highly recommend, or if you've got a million of them and you want to just make sure that they always get deleted automatically, you never see them, they're always in your inbox, it's easier just to click that spam button. But if you want to filter something, you can come right here and skip the inbox, mark as red, you can start if you want to, you can apply it to a label automatically when it comes in, you can forward it automatically to whoever you want to forward that one email to. Like for example, I forward my voicemails that come in automatically to Vicky, so she gets every single voicemail that comes in, which is my assistant. So if she can take care of it, she takes care of it. If not, then she forwards it back to me and says, hey, you need to take care of this one. Um, you can delete it, never send it to spam. So if every once in a while you get a person that, for some reason, they always go to the spam folder, and then you find it there, and it's like, crap. So if you, if you click on that box and you choose create a filter, never send to spam. It'll never go in the spam folder, no matter what's in the email. All right, so that saves a lot of time there. You can send a canned response if you want to to certain emails. So here's a canned response if you want to set it up. Uh, always mark it as important, never mark it as important, and exclude from the smart label categorization. And then anytime you set up a label, it, and once, you, once you set up whatever email that is, it's going to say, oh, you also have 15 emails or 100 emails or 10 emails. You want to check that box so it also applies to any of those emails, especially if you're putting it into a label. All right? Make sense? Gmail filters, delegation. So Gmail filters allow you to manage the flow of incoming messages using filters. You can automatically label, archive, delete, star, forward your email, even keep it out of spam, all based on a combination of keywords, sender, re recipient, and more. All right, I just want to bring that up there. So here's what my inbox used to look like. It used to be crazy, a ton of emails in here. See all these labels? i got different colored labels from TBWS and Scott. It, and there's Tammy and Rob and all kinds of different emails coming in. Well, if I wanted to set one and filter a message like that to get this box to show up right here, all I would do is check one of these boxes, click on more, and then filter message like this. And it would pull up that box and let me make any one of these choices right here. All right? Pretty cool stuff. So it would automatically, when it comes in, do whatever I tell it to do, forward, mark it as a label, put a label on it, and stuff like that. So how it looks today I have a reply, a snooze, a voicemail waiting, and zero in my inbox. And there's going to be a couple there. I left a couple there so I can show you how to do this live, actually mark stuff, reply to stuff, and, and that, that, that type of thing. So um, to filter a message or spam, we showed that. Click more. Click on filter messages like this. To apply it to a label, like, for example, if you want to snooze it, you can actually just click on labels, type in whatever you want to type. Whoops, I went forward. You can actually, if you know you have a snooze label, you know you have a reply label, you know you have a new buyer, a new seller, whatever the label is, you don't have to scroll through these. You can just type it in here. So new, if you started to type in new, it's going to show you the labels you have for new buyer. Whatever starts with new, it's going to bring them up there. So for example, reply, waiting, voicemail, whatever, you can apply them to a label really quickly as they come in so you can put them in the correct folders. Again, remember you can filter them and automatically put them in there if you want to. All right. Any questions for any of that stuff? It, there, there's quite a few questions. I'm, I'm thinking a lot of these we can handle on the back end of, of what we're doing. Okay. Um, you Perfect. know, some, some things about where's the search box and, and okay. where, where did you cool. find the controls and things like that. So it's, it's all good okay. questions. They're, they're following good. along nicely. So it's, it's good stuff good. we can get to at the very end. Okay, good. So what I'll do is I'll, we'll, we'll go through all the questions at the end. I'll show you guys. I'll go through live and, and show you some really cool stuff. So. All right, so you can move stuff to a folder. You've got one particular email that you, that you don't want to put into a filter. You can move it to the snooze button. You can move it to a folder. You can move it to reply, waiting, stuff like that. 
So here's the labels, side labels. If you would like more, you can have, and I have a ton of them. I'm, I'm actually going through and deleting all the labels that I had because they're really not truly necessary. But some people like, the, you know, if you're ultra organized and you want to have a label for every single email that comes in, you, you can do that with Gmail. It makes it really super simple. And the cool part about this that doesn't work with Outlook is you can put it, you can put one, you, you can put ten labels on one if you wanted to have reply buyer new buyer, um, homeowner, seller, you can have all those labels on one email or one person or one email address, okay? So you can get as crazy organized as you want, as many levels as you want, and you'll see that it's like here I have affiliates and then advocates and Doran, so I have labels underneath labels, and I'm just like, okay, I'm getting rid of those because it's not necessary because of the search function that Google has. So let me show you that. So Google Snooze, let's show you how to set it up real quick. And then we'll get into some questions, some other cool stuff that I want to add to it. And we're, I think we're doing really good on time. And I'm going to give you this PowerPoint. So what I want you to do is just walk through this. If you like the snooze function, which allows you to set up snooze and have it come back one, two, three, four, five days later, okay? So, um, uh, yeah, so what you want to do is you want to click on documents. Now, what I'll do is I'll give you this PowerPoint, but you want to click on documents to set this up and then create so click on create, click on spreadsheet. Paul, you gotta check this out, it's pretty easy to do. It's actually putting code into Facebook, or excuse me, into your Gmail account, so it's pretty cool. Click on create and then spreadsheet, and then click on tools, once you get there, and then you'll see script editor. And I had no idea this was even available, it's amazing that it is. So script editor, so click on tools, script editor, and then it's gonna ask you for a code, and this is the code that you actually wanna put in here. If you go to budyearl.com forward slash Google Snooze, it'll take you to the code. You just copy and paste it into the next screen that I'm going to share with you. So this is what it's going to look like when you get there, and you're going to delete this. So you're going to delete the little bit of code that's there, and then you're going to put this code in place of it, okay? It's really super simple. You don't have to know anything about the code. All you got to do is know how to copy the whole thing, right-click copy, and then add it to this part right here inside your Google inside your Google Docs. And then this is what it's going to look like when it's inside there. So it's un untitled project. It, this code will be in here. Please paste code given into open box where you deleted other code. All right. Step seven: file, save. So you're going to file and save it. It's going to you're going to give it a name. So I called it Google Snooze. And you're going to click OK. And then step nine is you're going to click on this little arrow, this little uh, click drop down and then set up. See this drop down and set up. And then number two is click arrow, which is run. So you're going to run the program. This sounds crazy. It sounds hard. It's not going to mess up anything. It's not going to mess up with Gmail. Trust me on that. It's, uh, it's really cool. And then you're going to authorize. It's going to go to this authorization request. You're going to click authorize. And then grant access. You're granting access for Google to accept this. And uh, that's it. So now... Um, the one last thing is click on resources and then current scripts triggers. You're going to set it so you can actually choose one through seven days. And if you want a code where you can snooze it for 31 days, Mike found a code. He was playing around one day and he found a code that you can actually go 31 days out if you want to. Uh, seven days is plenty for me, so if you want it, let, let us know. We'll get it to you. Click on the triggers, no trigger setup, and this is pretty cool. This is what happens. So number one, you choose uh, move snoozes, time driven, day timer and then midnight to 1 a.m., and then click Save. And now, when you go to your labels, you're going to have snooze one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, seven days. So when you get an email, you just check the box. You click the little drop-down, click Snooze, however many days you want. You get it out of there, and it comes back however many days you tell it to. Is that cool? Isn't that crazy, Paul? That's a trick that might be dangerous for me. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's so easy. Trust me. If you want help on that, we'll just do a little screen sharing, and it's easy. I mean, give me yeah, the step by step. It it looked perfect, it, it and, yeah, it, and that's easy enough to do. Um, yep. you, what you'll have, and and for all of you wondering, you'll have access to this PowerPoint as well. Just contact the loan officer Correct. that that invited you to this class today, and they'll get Absolutely. you connected with that PowerPoint, so you can go through and, and the step by step. Just follow them in order of the steps. It was just uh, go to the bug URL page and get the code, bring it That's back it. to your doc, delete what's there, and paste the yep. code back in, um, yep. save it at that point, and then you're, you're set it up through Gmail through the, the specific steps it asks you to do and confirm it and then tell it you know how, how frequently or infrequently you want it to, uh, to go off. That's it, man.
So you got it. You I like it. That that's going to. I'm going to be. Oh, cool you th- don't think for know. a minute I'll have this on here in about an hour. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> all right. So uh, here's some of the cool things that email does, and I'm going to I'm going to kind of go through this, and then we'll answer all the questions. I promise. Multiple email addresses with one account. Here's the cool part about this. So my email is scottybutt23 at gmail.com. Now remember, if you spam me, what's going to happen? So be cool about that, all right? Just saying. And you can always send me nice stuff, all right? I'm good at nice stuff. So here's the one thing that Gmail did is if, if I go S period, C period, O period, TTY, this email still comes to the same inbox. It, it doesn't look at the periods, but I can track it if I want to. So, for example, I, if I log into something and I go, hmm, I want to check this out, and I want them to send me an email, but I want to see if, if uh, who it comes from or if they spam my email out and it comes from, you know, they sell my email address, this is a great way to do that because well, I'm always signing up for stuff, letting them, you know, kind of seeing how they're sending the email, what they have to offer, you know, what their follow-up email is, just because that's what I do because I want to see if I find a good headline that really made me open an email, that's good. I can use it to my database, right? So you just never know. So um, you can that, that that's one. Here's another one. Scottybud23 at googlemail.com is another one you can use. And then there's another one that I like too is Scottybud23. If you put the plus and then whatever you want here, so say Scottybud23 plus buyer at gmail.com, you'll know that you sent that to a buyer. They respond. It came back from a buyer. So it's just one more way to – some people use this for uh, keeping uh, notes of different things. So they'll send themselves a – I know Denny, a good buddy of mine, like, he's been on the call before – so he'll put Scotty Bud, uh, he'll put his email plus notes at gmail.com. He has that automatically going into a folder of notes, so he emails himself. Just one way to keep track of stuff when he's out on the road, and that's one of the emails he has saved. Make sense? All right, so here's another thing that I want you to get downloaded. It's a free download. I'm going to show you this live. It's called wisestamp.com. It allows you to automatically put a really cool signature, but more importantly, it allows you to have um, your your social media sites in your email signature. We do not have massive, big, huge logos that, like I see sometimes. It's really cool and organized, and you can put as many of those social media sites as you want. When you're sending emails and communicating with people, you want to let them know where else you hang out, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever else. Maybe you're on Google+, whatever it is, do a Y stamp, have it automatically show up in Gmail for free, and just have a really professional looking, if you want a logo, if you want a picture, if you want a link, whatever you want to put in here, it allows you to do it for free, and it allows you to have a personal and a business email address, okay? So, wisestamp.com. Paul, do you use this, don't you? Pretty cool. You know, I, I, I used to, and then we did a, a computer switch here in the office, and, and I got a hand-me-down from someone else that had wide stamp on there, and I oh, cool. everywhere I went, the, the, the I was double double signaturing so I, I ended up uninstalling it and haven't turned it back on yet and it, you'll okay. notice that my email signature is pretty lacking at this particular time <laughs> right. so it's something right, I brother. probably need to set back up all right so you guys if you're uh, in Gmail you'll notice it looks pretty for free. you got the twos Google Plus and the shares Google Plus in your picture here well this it puts a little icon and this is in Chrome and it puts a little icon in Gmail and then it, this is your edit so you click on edit Y stamp and then what it does is it opens up you got personal whoops you got personal, and then if you do the drop down, you got a business. And then I just have my name and my phone number here. And then I have Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter are the three that I actually have in my email. So I just click the drop down for Facebook, put in my Facebook name, drop down for LinkedIn, and then the LinkedIn, my login. Twitter, same thing, Twitter. And then I click apply and OK. And then now it shows up. Every time I go to compose an email, it automatically appears. And then to change from personal to business, you just click this little drop down. And it'll allow you to choose if you have a business one set up and you want to do business and you want a personal. I just have one, but it's up to you whatever you want to have there, okay? So it's a free free software, and it's good to go. Now, Paul, I don't know if you knew this or not. I might, I might have one for you here that uh, is pretty cool. See this little T box right here, T with an X, mm-hmm. right next to there? What that is is you know how you copy and paste something into an email or the, the font in an email is like all messed up or you can't – it's a little bit different here and a little bit different there and – Mm-hmm. If you copy your whole email and you click this little text, it brings it to Gmail font that's, that's like professional, mm-hmm. puts it all the same. That's what that box is for. I actually did know that for for whatever yeah, reason. Okay, cool. I did because I've actually because <laughs> right. I had a trouble one time. I was I made an email that I was sending a broadcast out to a whole bunch of people on a blind CC. And when I pasted in from Word doc, it had it all messed up. It was you know the the first 
two oh. lines were small font, and then it was big, and then, sure. and so I was looking for something, and I did a Google search for what my answer could possibly be, and it showed me that little thing. So I did <laughs> click it. Little thing, cool. That so is a example, great little gizmo. Wanna, yeah, like if you want to copy somebody, like if you want to take part of an email and you copy it and you paste it into your email to send to someone else, and it's like, like for some reason, three other lines are one font, and uh, the rest of it's a different font. If you highlight the whole thing and then click on this little box right here, the T with the X, it'll it, it'll straighten it all out for you. Pretty cool. All right. So um, one thing you have to do if you're using Y stamp is to click on the settings tab right up here. So number one, click arrow. Two, click settings. Three, you should land every time you do that on the general, and then scroll down to where there's the signature. No, and click on no signature. Otherwise, it's going to put a signature whatever you have in here for your Gmail address. And it's um, you can it's just the Y stamp has more options to uh, to um, to put in your signature if you want to, if you will. All right. And the, the most important part is you can see the social media sites, the little the little tags here: Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Real nice, professional, and uh, you can edit all that stuff. All right. Don't like conversion. A lot of people go, I cannot switch to Gmail because it has like all these conversation pieces. Trust me on this. If you get once you get used to it, it's just like everything. If you change and get used to it, you'll love it. Especially when I show you the search criteria of how powerful it is. But if you want to absolutely turn it off, and here's what I did: is I used Gmail for a little bit. I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to get used to it. I'm like, all right, I'm I'm going to turn it off. Well, if you click on the settings tab again, little arrow, click on settings, and then general, right down here is a conversation view. You can turn it off. And once you get used to it, you'll, you'll really quickly turn it back on. Because what it does is every email going out and coming back in is separate from itself. So your inbox gets even bigger. All right? So your task, here's, the, here's one cool thing, is if you get an email, like, like I got this email and I want to make it a task. I know i got to have it as a task and i got to take care of it later. And I want to make sure and I want to put it in my task can't whatever. So you click on this little, you click the ch checkbox, click on more, and then click add to task. And it automatically throws it up in your task down here on the left, or excuse me, on the right hand side. All right, pretty neat if, uh, taking an email and doing that for you. And then if you want to view your task on your phone, of course you can view Gmail and all that stuff. The nice part about using Gmail too is if, if I drop my phone in the water, talking from experience, I walk in to get a new phone, walk out, and I have all the stuff I need as soon as I log into my Gmail, it's all there. Emails, tasks, documents, everything you can think of is right there. So this go to gmail.com forward slash task on your phone. It'll give you this little download. You can see your document or you can see your task there as well. All right. So one last thing that I'll talk about, and then we'll go to live and ask a bunch of questions or answer a bunch of questions, is reportive. Reportive. This shows you if you're connected with, and remember, remember at, 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 at the very beginning we talked about database, database, database. You can be thinking about this all the time. So when you open an email from a new buyer, new seller, new, new friend, friends, family, coworkers, whatever, are you connected to them on the social media sites? And this is the cool part. So let me just show you one that I did just yesterday. I got, a, I got an email from Mike, and he okayed me to put this up here, so he's cool with this. He had a referral for me then in New Jersey. He wanted to know if I could help him out. So I opened up his email, and you, you, you can see I put it in waiting because I'm waiting for his response. I asked him a question, so I put it in the waiting folder. But check it out. It shows his local tweets, his last tweets that he's had. It shows that um, I'm not connected to him on Facebook. It said, add a friend. If it shows that I'm a friend, it actually just shows a check mark, like right here. And I'm connected to them on LinkedIn, but not Facebook. So right in my inbox, I can connect with him on Facebook right here and just click Add as a Friend. And it sends the thing out there, and I'm done. And I know I'm constantly connecting with new people. And if he sent me an email, I know, one, he's in my inbox now. He's in my contact list. Two, I'm connected with him on LinkedIn. And why, not, why am I not connected with him on Facebook? So connect with him on Facebook as well. Is that cool? It's probably one of my favorites. And then, of course, Google Contacts. But this is, uh, this is also free. So Reportive.com, download it, add Reportive to Gmail, and it's a free add-on for Firefox, Safari, Mailplane, and Chrome. So if you use any one of those, you're good to go. All right? And then the hardest part. Here's the hardest part, and I promise we'll go, is staying out of your inbox. Once you set this stuff up, I mean, it's the hardest thing. So I, you know, maybe you remove the email from your phone. I don't know. But here's the schedule that Paul and I follow, 9, 8, 9 to 11 a.m., do the highest leverage work. So like, plan your day with the end in mind. What do I want to accomplish today? And we've talked about this before. What do I want to accomplish today so when I go home, I can feel like or I have accomplished something that's going to benefit and help me grow my business, whether it's connecting with four more buyers, five more buyers, new listings, new 
engaging with people on Facebook and LinkedIn, letting them know who I am and what I do for a living, whatever it is, 9 to 11, stay out of your inbox, or take your stuff from email of yesterday, okay? Because you have tasks or you have waiting or you have the replies that you need to do, take care of that stuff, all right? 11 to 11.30, process emails, pick a time, and stick to it, whether it's 11, 12, 1, 2, I don't care, whether it's 9 in the morning. The problem with your email, if you look at it first thing in the morning, and trust me, I'm talking from experience, is if you first, thing, I mean, it sits right by my bed. So I get up, first thing I grab is my phone, I grab my emails. If there's something in there that I know I should be taking care of, and I, and it's not, but it's not important, it's not gonna help me grow my business, I'm gonna think about it until it's done, right? That's just how our DNA is wired as salespeople. So don't even look at it. So you get to work and do whatever you wanna do from nine to 11, and if it's taking care of yesterday's stuff, then that, that so be it, that's what it is. But from 11 to 11.30, you do nothing but clean your inbox out, all right? Turn off your phone, don't answer your cell phone, don't look at your cell phone, just go through your email boxes and finish it, 30 minutes. 12.30 to 3.30, do other work, you know, whether it's calling on uh, past clients, calling on current clients, calling on new listing appointments, working with your assistant to teach her how to database management, working with your virtual assistant to figure out how to answer your, your calls and what you would say, and how to engage with people on Facebook and how to interact with people on Facebook and hey, what's our post today that we're gonna throw out there and ask a question and stuff like that. I, had, I don't know how many likes I got on that golf thing today and I actually took that from somebody else. Somebody called me and says, you won't believe an email I just got, it said this. So I said, man, that's great, forward that to me. Copy, paste, throw it in Facebook and I don't know, I had 30 something likes on it. It's like 30 something people know they liked my thing and they're like, hmm, they must be connected with that guy and if somebody's thinking about buying or selling a home, they're gonna go, man, he's a real estate agent. Oh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask so and so who liked his thing to see if they know him. And if they do, then they're <laughs> it's just a, a it, it's a match made in heaven. It's a relationship you don't have to work to get. It's a it's a warm referral because now they're working together and people are doing business with people they know, which is called social proof. That's the big deal with this. So got off on a little tangent there. Four PM to four thirty, another half hour. So I'm only taking an hour a day in my email. Process email. And then 4.30 to 4.45, manage to-do list based on tasks worked on today and last of emails, okay? Now, if you and your assistant is on this, you're gonna literally sit there and go, man, okay, I'm all organized, I have a reply, and I have this, and um, and I'm done. I don't know what to do with myself today, right? And that's the problem. It's like I should be doing something, but that's when you go, one, enjoy your life. Two is is be productive with other stuff that, that, um, that you wanna do with your life or your business, and that's the, that's the fun part about this. So, all right. So I got a couple emails in here, and I'm glad. I got one, two, three, four, five, and I left a couple of them. Here's one that, see, he's in the waiting folder, so I was waiting for his uh, response, which is cool. This is a great example for you guys. I also have him in Clyde with Nations. He's with Nations Title, Nations Title Kalamazoo. I have him in a couple different ones, and then waiting. So um, I want to, I can open it and take care of the issue, but here's one that's spam. I don't really care about my uh, nutshell mail. I, I must have signed up for something. So I'm gonna show you how to correctly spam an email so you don't see them anymore in your inbox because I never want to see this because it's not nothing I'm using right now, okay? So I'm going to check the box. and You'll notice when I uncheck, there's nothing showing up here. All I can do is more, mark all is red, select messages to see more options. So if once I check this box right here, I want to, one, here's the little report spam. If I click on that, it's going to delete it from my inbox and I'll never see it again from that email. Gone, zilch, done. Now what you don't want to do is you don't want to open an email and then scroll down to the bottom and, and click the, the I'm out of here, please don't send me any more emails because what that's going to do is let them know that it's a live person and spammers love that if you click that little button because it lets them know, oh, I got a live email address and they will sell your email. You'll get more spam than you could ever imagine. So click the box, click the spam folder. It deletes it instantly from your inbox. You can see that it's gone and you're done, okay? Now, say that, um, that that I want to set up a filter for this. Okay, now I have to respond to this. So I'm going to I'm gonna drag my reply button over there. See this reply right here? Paul, can you see this? Yes. Okay, here's the cool thing about these labels is I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is left-click on them and then drag. See how I, I'm going to pick it up and drag it over here and drop it. And it automatically applies the reply labor, label, excuse me, to this email address. Now if I click it, because I know I need to respond to it later, not right now, I click it, now it's gone. Now if I click on my reply, you're gonna see it in my reply folder as Sarah, right here it is, Home Buyer University, right? 
so I can take care of these whenever I want to take care of them, or same with the waiting folder. Is that cool? So here, here's another one. So here's uh, here, here's another one that I just you just want to archive. So if I archive it, I'm going to archive. So Vicky Sierra, so it says touching base with to do items. All right. So I'm going to archive this. I'm going to show you something. So if I archive it, what it does is it puts it under my all mail inbox. So if I click on that, I'll see it there. But what about what if I put in to do items? Because I know that's what she said, and I want to search for this. And I'm I'm testing this. I don't know if it'll work, but let's just see if it does. So it's loading, it's searching through all of my inbox. So here it is right here, very first one, touching base with to do items. See how that comes up? That's how powerful, this is the search item right here. This is your search box right here. So anything you want to search, say Clyde, say I want to search something, see the possible states right here? If I click, poss and I know it said he was emailing me and it said possible states. So if I put in possible states, because I know that, that was in the email, I don't remember the name, I don't remember anything else about the conversation except for possible states. I'm going to click the search button, and it's going to show me that email. Of course, anything else that has possible states in it is going to come up, but it's the very first one that comes up. Really, really powerful search criteria. Now, if you want to search more like, like, like something else that has an attachment, say I want to search Clyde, and I want to search everything from Clyde that has an attachment. I'm going to click the drop down. Well, first I can open this email, and then uh, I'm going to go for his email address. If you click the little arrow there, I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to click Copy. And so I'm going to go back to this little box right here, the search criteria. I'm going to click the little arrow, Show Search Option. And now I'm going to click Everything from Clyde. And it has an attachment, because I know that he sent me something that has an attachment. That's how I would find it. So email address from, you could, I could do two. Subject has the words, doesn't have and then search email. So if I search, it's going to search everything from that email address that was sent to me that has an attachment. So you'll see that everything, it pulled up everything from Clyde, and of course it put everything from here. For some, for, for, for some reason it pulled the attachments plus his stuff, but here's one that had his email in it with the attachment. So you can really quickly look through and see that it has an attachment. All right. Now if you want to set up a filter, say I want to set up a filter, like I want this to be automatically going to Clyde with Nations, and I'll and I'll, uh, I'll do this with, with Mike. So I'm going to check this, and I want to attach it to this label, or I want to put it on waiting. All I do is drag it over there. So I'm going to put it on waiting because I know I have to do it eventually, or I'm waiting for a response. I just drag the label over there. Now, if I want to set up a filter to where I want to automatically put this thing into my uh, part, like say it's, say it's my VA from, from my VA. So I'm going to check the box. I'm going to click on More, and then Filter Message. And then I'm going to, like right here, it says uh, I want to filter from Mike to subject has words. And then it says create filter with this search. I'm going to click on that. Here this other box opens up, and it says, all right, I want to skip the inbox. I want to mark it as red, and I want to apply to a label. That, and maybe I don't have a label that's already set up. You'll see that I used to use a ton of labels. I'm not big on that anymore. So I'm going to create a new label, and I want it to automatically go to reply. All right? Or I want it to go to, let's set up a new one that, um, actually, that one's already in there. So let's set up one that says VA uh, help. All right? I'm going to create. And then you'll see there's only one email here. If there was 10, you would have just checked that box and then create filter. So what it's going to do is it's going to attach a filter that says, um, where's that, Clyde? Oops, okay, it's gone. So put it under. So what it did is it actually threw it under that filter and it archived it, okay? So if I go to VA help, if I click on more, this is a cool example. So click on more and you'll see all your labels down here. I'm just going to go to, I'll probably pick the, the worst ones at the very end. So I'll just go to the very end. So VA help, right there, VA help. And then what I want to do is I want the VA help label to show all the time. So I'm going to click this box and I'm going to choose it as red because I know it's urgent. Now it's going to show red. See the little red box there. And I also want to have it show all the time, not just if I have an unread email. So if Mike, if I leave it checked just like this, it's going to show if Mike sends me an email and I haven't read it yet, then it'll pop up in one of my folders up above where my reply and my waiting folder is. All right? So you just click that button, choose the color, choose show, show, and it'll change it to that. And now if I scroll back up here, let me just uh, pick this up and show it up here. 
Now you'll notice if I click Inbox, you'll see I have a reply, a snooze, and VA help. So it's always going to show right there because I know if I get emails from there, I want to keep that folder so I can quickly reply to them. All right, so that's where that is. And um, I guess that's about it. Paul, let's answer some questions and uh, go over some stuff. Oh, to remove, like say I wanted to remove Mike that I put in VA help. I want to remove him from there. So I want to click on that. And here's the email that I put as that folder. And I want to remove him from the waiting folder because I already took care of it. I want to remove him from a VA help so it's not going to be in that folder anymore. All I do is click the little X button right there. And it removes it. Now it's not in the VA help folder anymore. It's still in my waiting folder which if I click on there, it'll still be there because I had it under the waiting tab. You'll see it's still right here. Call back. And if I click on that, the waiting folder is going to be there. I'm going to leave it there because I have to take care of this later. All right? So that's how you literally get stuff out of the way, put it in certain folders, or put it in folders that you want to uh, uh, do. I'm going to actually show this as unread and leave it there. These are the only two you need, waiting and reply. Just put them in one or the other, and they just burn through those or have your assistant burn through them. Again, reply is if you um, have to reply to something that you don't have the answer to or it's going to take you a little homework to get to it. Now, what I will tell you is if someone sends an email to you, it's not like the house is on fire. It's not like they have, need an urgent, urgent answer to it. They just expect it within the, with, with it that day, right, or possibly the next morning. If it's important, they're going to pick up the phone and call you because they're going to let you know, hey, I need to know this right now. But an email is just accepted that I don't have to reply to it right now. Make sense? And then waiting is if I send an email, like say I send Paul an email right now, and I go, hey, Paul, just wondering if you, uh, if, if you heard from Tom. And I'm going to, so I'm going to compose. I'm going to go Paul. I'm going to send Paul Baxter an email. And then I'm going to put it under label. I'm going to click labels, and I'm going to put reply. Actually, I'm going to put it under waiting because I'm waiting. See the waiting comes up. I'm going to apply the waiting label to this, and then I'm going to send them an email saying, hey, did Ron call you back yet? And I know I need a response, and I'm going to push send. So now Paul is under the reply or the waiting thing, sending in the background. And so if I click on the waiting label, loading, Paul, there's the uh, Paul, hey, hey, did Ron call you back? So I know this is here. So as soon as, as Paul says, responds and said yes, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click on the delete the waiting because I'm, I'm done with it, and it's out of my waiting folder, and it now and it's in all email, which is the archive. Does that make sense, Paul? It absolutely does. Is that cool? I like Crazy. it. It's like major, massive organization on your inbox or Gmail or whatever. You know, it's, it's you know, um, you know, for Gmail, Gmail has so many features that we didn't cover today. But um, the reply and the waiting is what I want you to get, and then the snooze if you want to set it up to. So, for example, say I wanted this to, um, I wanted to snooze this. So I check the box, and I would click the labels, and I would type in snooze. There's one through seven days. I want it to come back tomorrow, and it, so it labeled it as snooze right here. So now, if I archive it, it'll come back tomorrow. All right. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do that because I need to take care of this today. So I'm gonna delete the snooze one, <laughs> and then uh, I'm back and I'm back. It's in my inbox now. Playing right. with live emails, you don't want to make, do the wrong careful, one. Man. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Scott, we've got some great questions in the queue box, and 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 I know right. this isn't. We we were covering some higher level stuff, but we've got a lot of folks in here who are using other email sources like Outlook, um, like you know, uh, uh, different email sources. Can you just quickly dip into where you would go to forward any and all of your email addresses to the one Gmail account? Absolutely. So what? So the mindset behind that, and that is a fantastic question. There's some really good questions. So, well, hey, Paul, we'll just stick around and answer these. So what you do is you click on the settings, and this is what you want to do is log into the other email that you have that you want to forward. Like, so say that I have homebuyer, uh, homebuyerbook at gmail.com. So I would log into the homebuyerbook at gmail.com, and I would click on the settings tab right here, and then I would click on the settings tab again. And then what it's going to do is take me to the back end of all my Gmail and all that stuff. So what I want to do is forwarding in pop. Click on forwarding in pop. And then forward a copy of incoming mail to. So I would, click, I would check this box. And then I would add a drop down of who I wanted to forward it to. All right. And if it's scottybud23, whatever your home base email is. So I got all my emails coming to one email address. And I also have it responding from that email address. So you never know that you... Re you send an email to the wrong address, 
And here's how when you set up a um, when you set up your accounts, what you're going to want to do is click on accounts and import, and then send mail as. So I want to send mail as that that person to, you and then scroll. You'll see that I can send emails from a, a ton of different emails. You want to add another email address you own, and then you'll see this little box right here that says reply from the same address the message was sent to. So if you send me an email to homebuyerbox at gmail.com, homebuyerbook at gmail.com, it'll come in from there and it'll, re it'll allow me to respond from there automatically. I don't even have to think about it. So if you notice, when I click on compose, right here is the from. I can choose homebuyerbook at gmail.com if I want to or any other emails that I have available that I can send from. There's homebuyerbook at gmail, so I'm going to send from homebuyerbook at gmail. And gmail knows to automatically do that if you check that box. I've seen a couple other questions that were good questions. There's some, there's some really good ones here. I've, uh, I've flagged a few as, as good questions. Okay. Um, uh, one of the most popular questions we're getting, and, and I, I, it, it's a good question, but one of the single most popular questions has been, what is the theme that you're currently using? Where, oh, okay. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I explained yeah. how to get to the themes. But what theme are you using? Yeah, let me just go into, let me move this down a little bit here. It is, so if you click on the little wrench, I don't know if you use Chrome, I love Chrome. So if you click on the wrench, and then I'm going to go to Tools and then Extensions. What it's called? It's called Google Redesign. Uh, I'm just going. I know. I love the. I love the theme, man. Um, right there, Google Redesign. So it's in your website store. In fact, I can put the link up for you. So let me just. Uh, if you go to uh, Chrome.Google forward slash website or web store, but here's the uh, here's the store that it takes you to. But if you go to your Google store and Google uh, um, Google Redesign, that's what it, that's what it's going to be called. Oops, let me go back to that. So uh, Google Redesign, it's add to Chrome. You just add it, and it just sets in your uh, tools section. Really, really nice. I love the I love the format of it. Had some glitches before, but I have had zero problems with it uh, since I've been using it now. Um, another really popular question is 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 it. It, is it fairly easy to move all of my contacts from, let's say, Outlook or Actor or another service into Gmail? Can you touch on that? Great. I know you yeah. can't show Great how to question. export from the other places, but you can kind of show how to import those those contacts. Yeah, I actually have. I actually have a. Um, Do you uh, have an really Outlook quickly. account? What's that? Do you have an Outlook account? Oh, no, I thought I don't, you were going to jump into Google, Outlook. I actually searched for. Um, I actually searched how to how to export from there because uh, everybody has different different outlooks. So let me just go in. I'll give you the bud URL to it. So it's budurl.com forward slash. Uh, let me just see here real quick. It's budurl.com forward slash exporting contact. We just put forward dot. It's this pretty easy to you. do in, in Outlook. What you basically are going to do is you're going to click on your Contacts tab, and in the yeah. selections that drop down, you're going to have an option that says Open. And when you click on Open, it's going to drop down a box. And, and inside that box, you'll have an option that says Export to CSV yeah. file. That's what you want right. to select. And then it will follow. it will literally prompt you through the rest of the process to export the file. The yep. key is, is once you've exported it from Outlook, is to get rid of all of the empty. You're going to have a bunch of empty fields. Get rid of all the empty fields in your CSV file before you before you import it into Gmail. Yeah, and this shows you how this shows you how to do. If you have uh, Outlook three, seven, or ten, I believe that's what's in here. So just if you go to budgerocom forward slash exporting contacts. Now here's what you're going to do when you export them: is you're going to come into Gmail. And you're going to click on the Gmail little drop-down box here, and it'll have Gmail contacts and tasks. You're going to click on contacts, and um, and actually, actually, you know what? I want to show you something else before we go. But if you have an export, if you have an Excel spreadsheet of it, just um, all you do is click, click on more, and then import. Here's the import button. Click on import, and then you just choose CSV file and upload it right into Gmail. If you have any problems, just let us know. And, and then and here's the uh, here's the other cool thing that I did last week is a lady had an AOL address or a Yahoo or whatever. So check this out. So if you click on the settings tab over here, and you click on settings again, and then it'll say it, it actually helps you. And this is a cool way. So if you act account then import right here, if you click on that and you scroll down to um, oops, I'm sorry, it's right at the top. 
Import from Yahoo, Hotmail, AOL, or other web or POP3 accounts. Import email. Try it right here first. Depending on you know, Outlook, it's not going to work, of course. But if you have one of these other accounts and you want to switch, try it right here first and see if that doesn't get your contact in there for you. All right. Richard's got a great question here. Will spam mail get forwarded? Say if an email is accidentally filtered to a spam box and it gets deleted, will a copy be forwarded to the Gmail account so I can go into my Gmail account and find it and save it to a different file from there? So yeah, but basically, if, if I've got an Outlook, I've tagged something as spam in my Outlook, and I have all my Outlook emails being forwarded to Gmail, will I have a copy of what I accidentally deleted in, from yes, my spam absolutely. folder on Outlook? Yeah, okay. and even if, you, even if you delete it, like here's the delete button, here's the spam button, you'll notice I have a spam button over here, and then I have a delete button. So if I ever, every once in a while, I'll go on my spam, and heaven forbid there's anything bad in here, because trust me, there's a bunch of crazy up in here so what um, your spam folder is right here and what I typically do is clear out my spam folder because there's just crap that comes in there like crazy because I'm all over the internet and I'm not, I, I'm signing up stuff so I apologize for what you just seen there but um, so that spam folder is always there the all mail is always there and then you have a deleted folder which I don't have showing which is under more and then I think it's the trash here's the trash so if you click on the more right here click on trash there's your trash now I typically don't delete. I, I I don't know that I delete any emails ever. I always archive them because there's just no reason. You get you get so much storage. I have for five dollars a year, and I purchased it because I was approaching my. I, I I went over. I doubled my seven gig that I was using. But you guys can't see this right now. But I'm using. Uh, there you go. I'm using 13.9 gig of my 30 gigabyte that I have available. And you know, Paul, I think they upgraded that because you can buy. Let me just show you where that's at. This is crit. This is Google is by far the cheapest online in the cloud storage on planet Earth. There's nothing cheaper than uh, <laughs> Google. So you click on the the tool, the settings tab, and then you go over to accounts and import. And then at the very bottom, it has uh, you are currently using 13 gig. Let's see, that's not it. That's not what I wanted. Is it Gmail? Let's see here. Um, no signature. And while you're looking well, for that, Peggy's question is, will Gmail recognize duplicates when importing? Yes, that Gmail yes, will yes. deduplicate your list if, Actually, the, if, if the name is spelled the exact same in both. That's a great question because here's the thing. is You can actually, there's a button in here that says uh, um, find and merge duplicates. So even if you do import them, you just find and merge and they'll take care of them for you. And that's it. That that find and merge is going to help you if you've got a person that you've got them in there twice, and it's because they've got multiple email addresses, and it will yeah. actually save both email addresses under the one contact information for you. Correct. Here's why. Here's why. Let me just show you guys something for the agents on the call. And again, contact your loan professional to get a copy of the recording, and if you if you got to leave and a copy of the PowerPoint. But here's the power behind keeping stuff in the cloud. So my LinkedIn right now. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile. You need to go set it up, and we'll have a class on this. But see this Add Connections button on LinkedIn right there? I'm going to click on Add Connections, and this is where it gets really – I had an agent literally in 30 minutes have a new new seller lead within 30 minutes because she just connected with people on LinkedIn. So I'm going to put in uh, scottybud23 at gmail.com, and then AMM. So uh, what it's going to do is I'm going to continue. It's going to go look and pull from my Gmail. I'm going to allow here. I would highly recommend doing this if you haven't done this. Get your contacts. In, if you have Yahoo or whatever, do this right now. Click allow, and it's going to go search for every contact I have in Gmail that I have not connected with. Now, I have, I have about 7,000 contacts in Gmail, so I'm going to have a lot bigger number than most. But if you're not letting people know who you are and what you do, uh, do for a living and connecting with them, where they live, eat, and breathe, which is Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, a little bit on Twitter. If you're not connecting with them on Facebook and LinkedIn, you could be missing that deal. So we found 655 people you know on LinkedIn, select the people you'd like to connect to. It, it, it automatically checks uh, all, so you add connections. And then the next step is, um, the next step is step two, is here's the people that don't, are, are, that aren't on LinkedIn, that um, so stay in touch with your contacts who aren't on LinkedIn yet. Invite them to connect with you. There's a, there's a 18 eight, eight, 1,886 selected. So as you can see, this is a really I mean that took me what two seconds.
to send an invite saying, hey, I'm on LinkedIn, connect with me, through my Gmail that's always 100% of the time up to date. So if you do this once a month, you know for certain that you're connecting with people that are on LinkedIn, and you can do the same thing on Facebook, connect with people on Facebook, but start thinking about building that list and connecting with people, letting them know who you are and what you do for a living. And your business will just automatically grow, especially if you do good business, right? And you use all the tools, systems, and strategies the single property website is a number uno. I can't even tell you how many testimonials I get from people that are using that as a listing presentation every single day. It's like I got a $500,000 listing, and it, and it was over as soon as I got to the QR code. I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent, but it's just it's really powerful stuff. Any other questions, Paul? Uh, well, just a couple of little ones here and there that are that are follow-ups. For the most part, you've answered all of the good ones, um, or you know, all the the specific questions about some stuff. Um, you know, just little things about exporting and and the different programs. Um, what program? Again, another question about the the theme you're using. Yeah. And and for those of you, a, a lot of questions coming in all of a sudden about about being able to see a replay on this. Yes, there is a replay available. Get with the and the PowerPoint will be available with it. So get with the loan officer that invited you uh, to the program, and and they'll make the uh, the replay Email available storage. for you. Um, let's just go. Let's just go. For, I don't know why that I can't find that. And instead of wasting your guys' time, let me just go to uh, somebody asked about storage. So. Um, mm -hmm. Google storage, uh, storage pricing, here we go. So Google Drive, two terabyte, you can get a terabyte for like 200 and something bucks of pricing and support. Let's see, Google Enterprise, no, you don't need the professional, you don't need the professional, you don't need to pay the $50 a year for that, you do not need that, I, I don't use that. Um, I know the thing about it is, is it, it, even Denny Andrews. I mean, even you and Denny, between the two of you, probably use Gmail more than anybody. I know you don't ever delete your mails. I would question that in your all mailbox there is probably oh, well over oh, ten thousand okay. emails in there. Actually, there's, there's uh, thirty, forty thousand. Check it out. Yeah, there's uh, there is. Let me just go to all, and let me check uh, all. Yeah, there's a hundred and twelve thousand emails, and you're nowhere near the storage capacity no, that that, no. that you that you could do on the free account. So, yeah. you know, I know I know it well, sounds I mean, interesting have, to I, have I, all the I extra the storage. Yeah. You did yeah. pay the five dollars. Yeah, I did. I okay, did. I, Cause I, cause that I surprises 13, me. I'm at thirteen gig. Okay, I'm at thirteen, uh, fourteen gig now. Forty, so I'm using forty six percent of what I have available. So I'm only at fifty. So for five bucks a year, I have. <laughs> 112,000 emails that I can immediately pull up with the click of my button, you know, the click of my hand to search this, and and, and it's really really powerful. So Google Storage, this is bugging me that I can't find it. Let me, um, and it might just be this. So see General, let me just scroll down here, Icons, um, use default, not there. So labels, no. So there's the labels tab. The new that that that's where you'd add your labels. Account and import change. That's your other Google account settings. That might be there. I thought it was um, that was right here, but it's not showing me. Grant access. Uh, let's see. Filters forwarding. Maybe it's forwarding and pop. Let's see here. Um, configure. Well, shoot, guys. I'm sorry. Let me see other Google settings to see what's in here. There's a bunch of stuff. Change password. Uh, here we go. View and modify plan. So if you click on if you um, let me just go back. So if you click on accounts and import, other Google account settings, and then where it takes you is right here. And then down here it says you are using 3.49 gigs. So verify or modify plan. There's 20 gig for five bucks a year right there. So buy storage. Here's 20 gig for five bucks. 25 gig for uh, 2.49 a month, which is what 30 bucks a year. Um, here's 100 gig for five bucks a month. So that's 50, 60, 7, 60 bucks a year for 100 gig. Crazy. It's cheaper than Box.net, or it's cheaper than Dropbox. It's cheaper than all of them. So, and it says here I'm using 20% of the th of uh, use of the three point. Uh, so, yeah, that. And what it does is it actually counts towards your Google Documents, which we're going to do a class on that uh, coming up here. So, Google Docs and all that other stuff. All right. Anything else? That's it, brother. Great stuff, Scotty. Okay, cool. Okay, buddy. 
Hey, man. All right, man. So let me know if you have any questions. Make sure you go to the group. Uh, it, depending on where you're at, if you're in Detroit, it's uh, SMP Mastermind. But our group is uh, Facebook.com. This thing is growing out of control. They're having a lot of fun, a lot of people learning. And the cool part about it is if you're in the group, um, Agent Mastermind, and if you're in the group, if you ask a question, it only stays in the group. Facebook's really cool about that. So everybody in the group sees it, but nobody else, your friends, your family, you don't have to worry about like, like uh, your, you know, at people that you don't want to see your stuff, seeing your stuff. So get signed up, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash agent mastermind. If you have a question about anything we covered today, go there. We'll, uh, we monitor that like white on rice. And we were there. There's Paul's there, Mike's there, I'm there. Every, everybody's there uh, helping out. Of course, other people that know the answer, please feel free to answer the questions and uh we, we just really appreciate your guys' time. We know you could be anywhere today, and you chose to spend it with us. And we sincerely appreciate that and look forward to helping you grow your business now and in the future. All right? Paul, as always, appreciate you, brother. Scott, you outdid yourself again, brother. You know, great stuff, great technology stuff, and uh, thank you for bringing that to the table for us. All right, man. We'll see you right here next week on the Agent Mastermind. Everybody, make it a great day. Have a great day. And I want to see some empty inboxes, all right? If you get in an empty inbox and you have the courage, here's how you clear it. Here's how you get there. So you go right here. You click on um, you click on this little button right here. Click on all. A little thing is going to come up where it's going to say all of them, and you click archive. Get rid of your inbox, okay? Get them out of there. That's going to be the hardest part. You'll probably start sweating, and heartbeat's going to go up, and blood pressure's going to go up, but it's okay. I promise you if, you, if you, if you want help, we'll help you find that email that you just archived, okay? So just uh, make the plunge, do it, and uh, I love to see pictures on the Facebook group of empty inboxes. I would love, love, love it because it's an unbelievable, Paul, you know what I'm talking about. It is an unbelievable feeling of freedom and time management that you can't even imagine you'll feel once you do this, all right? Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day.